Hi, my name is Joan Ruain, and today we're going to talk about spinning wheels, the different types of spinning wheels and how they're put together. But first, we're going to go through the parts of a spinning wheel. All spinning wheels are quite similar in that this is old mechanism here is called the mother of all. So you have the maidens that are holding up the most important thing of all, the flyer. Why is that important? Because that is what puts the twist onto the fiber. And then you have to have a place to store it, so this is the bobbin, and it stores on the bobbin. This is the orifice, where the thread goes through and then through along the hooks and then wraps onto the bobbins. The back here is the whirl, which has three different grooves in this case, of, and each groove changes the ratio of the flyer, meaning the smaller the diameter of the whirl, the faster the flyer is going around. And the larger it is, the slower it will be. So you control the speed of the flyer by this whirl. And the whole mechanism, as I said, is called the mother of all. There is also the little hook to go in to catch your thread to bring it through, and that is hidden right here. Now, this is a double band wheel. So this band is going over the bobbin and reacting like a break on the bobbin. This one here, which is in on the whirl, is going to do the ratio of the flyer, and that controls the flyer. So this, this belt, when it is going up, over the wheel, and as you turn the wheel, then the flyer will go around. The wheel, this is the spokes in the wheel, and the bars to hold up your um, wheel. Here's bobbin holders, so your bobbins are just held here. Of course, here's your seat, here's your legs, and here's your treadle, and your treadle is what makes it go around. And it has to be hooked to the wheel by the footman. In this case, this is an older spinning wheel, and it has a string um, footman on it, where the new ones you will see have a wooden one. That is mostly the basic parts of a spinning wheel. And again, this is called a Saxony wheel because the mother of all is on one area and to the right or to the left is the, um, the wheel. So this is called a Saxony wheel. Let's look at a castle wheel. It's no difference. It operates basically the same, except this is a single band driven wheel. And so when you treadle uh, with this one, um, the flyer, this will make the, this band here will make the flyer go around and the braking system is here with a scotch tension right here. So the looser I loosen this, the less that it pulls in. If my thread doesn't go in, I'm going to tighten this up and the tightener I tighten it, the faster the thread will go in. This wheel has two treadles, and you notice it has a wooden footman. Like I mentioned before, um, most modern ones have a wooden one. Double treadles are a little bit easier to control your, your wheel, um, but a single treadle is fine as well. So that bit pretty much is um, what a... This is just a castle wheel, and this is that. This is a Scotch tension. It's a single band driven and not a double band. Now let's look at the last one that I have here because this one is bobbin driven. That means when I move the wheel around, the only thing that goes around is the bobbin. And this one is a nice wheel for long staple, and that's what it was designed for: is a long staple fiber. But since we are doing a short staple cotton, what we're going to need to do is a little bit of adjusting on this one. So what we first we do is we remove completely the tensioner so that there is no tension because the orifice is so big, it is causing tension here, rubbing, and it is pulling in a little too fast. So what you can do is to kind of fake it out and 
get some tubing. This is insulation that goes over your pipes in the winter. And you place it on the center of the, the bobbin so that it makes the, the wheel feel like it is half full of yarn. And when the yarn builds up, it causes a little bit of friction, and so it slows up the pull-in or the draw-in. So that is one thing that you can do. The other is you can take your lead and crisscross it before you put it through the orifice and that will cause the tension so that it will not pull the yarn out or the fiber too quickly before it is twisted and is strong. So that should help you if you have a Louette wheel that is bobbin driven. Those are some tips that you can use. Now, it's been a pleasure to be with you today and I hope that you uh, will buy my book that says Cotton Spinning Beginning, I'm sorry. Be called Beginning Cotton Spinning. And there is a lot of information in there. And also my website, www.cottonspinning.com, will give you a lot of information. And I always welcome uh, emails and I answer questions about cotton spinning. You have a good day and thank you for being with us.